As soon as trailers for the new Resident Evil game Village dropped, the internet quickly became entranced by the 9 foot tall vampire woman with the big swoopy hat, quickly becoming Resident Evil's most searched for character online. Before the game even released, Lady Domitrescu was drawing a lot of attention just off her design alone. Which is why, upon seeing this tweet, I was absolutely shocked. This photo was taken in 1938, and it features the lady's outfit only missing her necklace, flowers, and gloves. What surprised me even more were the reactions in the comments. Overwhelmingly, most people were defending the design, most often saying something along the lines of, do people not know what using a reference means? Yeah, that's how using references for art works. Oh no, someone used a reference to draw, imagine. People clearly don't know what concept art is, and it shows. There was one guy who felt the reference and the concept art were too similar, but as you can see by this unfortunate ratio of likes to comments, most of the responses he got were like this, and it was incredibly unpopular. Now, before I go any further, I admit I'm not currently a AAA game character designer. I do have a degree in character design though, um, so I have spent many days of my life making design documents and character designs. I've been graded and critiqued on them, and in these homework assignments, you always have to turn in your references alongside your work. And for what it's worth, at least at my school, if a student's homework was to make a character design, let's say of a giant vampire woman, and they turned in this image with this reference, I do think that student would be in trouble for not putting in enough of their own ideas into the design. I'm not going to pretend that this design isn't amazing though. The juxtaposition of this super authentic costuming with the larger than life haunted house proportions and acting of a Resident Evil character is a really good combination. But I have to wonder, how much better could her design have been if they'd just taken this and really dug into each piece of her design, altering and adjusting things to become more personal and relevant to her? I'm certain the design would have become even more iconic. I think if they had spent more time with her, she would have fit more with the rest of the cast, and I'm certain with her physique and height, any changes they would have made wouldn't have stopped the internet from asking her to step on them. <laughs> Some of you might be wondering, what is the harm in this? Obviously the model in the picture and the photographer probably aren't even alive to be upset, so who cares? For me, this isn't really about stealing a design, but more about skipping over the most important part of designing your character. Like I said, each piece of your character should, in my opinion, help tell their story or reinforce their character. Which means in her case, her dress, hairstyle, and hat should all have been individually designed with her personality, time period, story, and the other characters that she's around in mind. But we know this didn't happen because this piece of concept art, which looks so close to the reference image, is identical to her final design, all the way to the buttons on her sleeves. I think this also creates a problem with the other characters in the game, in particular her daughters. Before I even knew about this, I thought to myself that while I loved Lady Domitrescu's design, it didn't really look like she came from the same world that her daughters did. Their designs felt more classically Resident Evil to me, a series that typically went for overdramatic, like, gothic looks, whereas she had this more, like, subtle, refined quality. Looking at concept art for her daughters, it doesn't appear that they were designed the way she was, mimicking an authentic vintage photograph, but were instead photobashed together with the faces of models underneath painting. This is a standard practice for concept artists, as spending time rendering the face is not important, so artists will quickly place in photographs to design outfits, makeup, and other accessories on top of, which make up the bulk of a character designer's work. This tweet in particular confused me because they suggested that this is like photo bashing, but I would argue it's kind of the opposite. The bash part of photo bashing refers to bashing together multiple photos and then painting them together into a unique image, whether it's a spaceship, landscape, or character design. This video by Johnson Ting actually shows you how you can use just one image to photo bash, but in this case, you can see that uh, they completely change and transform what they were bashing off of. Um, they used many, many, many copies of the camcorder that they started with to make something wholly unique, a robot. And by the end of it, it just looks incredible. It does not at all resemble the starting photograph. I could not find a single video describing itself as photo bashing that didn't use either multiple different images, like tons and tons of images, or transformed it in such a way with many, many copies of the same image that you couldn't even recognize where the original photo came from. So to me, the idea that this is similar to or is an example of photo bashing, just, I, I really don't get it. Like, I don't see where people are finding that similarity. And especially because at this point, they likely already knew Lady's body type and height, all the concept artist added here to this image, which would become the finalized design, is gloves, a necklace, and a large flower. 
Despite the reactions of so many people under this tweet, I don't believe that this is normal for a concept artist to do. I do believe that most of the iconic character designs for modern productions are the combination of tens if not hundreds of references, as well as many elements that are entirely bespoke and designed by the artist who drew them. And this really gets into the difference between like being an illustrator or a painter versus being a concept artist or a character designer. So the definition of a concept artist is a designer who visualizes and creates art for characters, creatures, vehicles, environments, and other creative assets. Concept art is used to visualize ideas so that modelers, animators, and VFX teams can make these ideas ready for production. So with that in mind, this is why a concept artist should never be taking a whole outfit wholesale and just slapping it onto a pre uh, determined character, especially if they're going to take their makeup and their hairstyle as well. At that point, what ideas are they visualizing that they couldn't have just photoshopped onto that original photo that they had? Like, all they had to do was widen her frame, make her a little taller, and add on the, the, the gloves and the flower. Like, why even repaint it? Basically, all I wish is that with a character like this that's going to go down in history as one of the more memorable um, character designs probably for this whole year, um, I wish that they had spent a little bit more time and thought on her outfit. Um, just because, like, I don't know, it really disappoints me to know that, like, the majority of this silhouette and their design choices on her, um, were just taken off of one singular reference. Not even two references combined together. Literally one reference of one woman who was styled a certain way in 1938, and they were just like, alright, put a big ol' corsage on it and we're, we're good to go. Um, I, I mean, I don't mean to be dismissive because I know that they're probably dealing with like cr crunch and like having to put out tons and tons of designs, but I just would have loved to see versions of her with like, I don't know, like shoulder pads. And that was a big thing in the 1930s and it would have made her um, silhouette and her frame look even bigger. Uh, it'd be cool to see. I mean, I feel like if you look at just even a few more 1930s like vampy outfits, there's probably tons of new details they could have added to make her feel more special, more unique. I just find it so hard to believe that if they really iterated on this and tried it with new details, different cuts, and changes to things like the hemline or the sleeves, that they would have come to the conclusion that exactly this dress uh, with the same like buttons on the sleeves, the same darts in the front, exactly that is the best version of her outfit. It seems genuinely impossible that there was no better version of this that they could have made themselves. And so many of the other designs that I've seen just feel so disparate from this one. And I think this has got to be why, right? Like <laughs> the other ones were definitely not designed this way. And um, that's why they don't look like they go together. That's why they don't belong together. I feel like when you look at any of the other Resident Evil games, like in Resident Evil 4, which was a major, um, uh, like at least gameplay and setting wise, it was a major inspiration for this. Like every character looks like they belong in the same game together. And I just don't know if I can say that for like uh, Lady Domitrescu and like the other enemies in this game, like look at them all together. She kind of stands out, like she's much more, it's a great design, but she's much, different like she's much more um refined and held back and that's because she has this like really historical background i i had some people like responding to this with like well yeah they wanted to make it historically accurate um but i <laughs> i think that that's a little funny if you look at any of the other characters even the characters she shares screen time with like clearly that wasn't the primary <laughs> focus of these character designs so i think that's a pretty poor excuse in fairness to the team though, there are some non-poor excuses for what may have potentially have happened. First of all, Lady D Domachescu, <laughs> I'm never going to be able to say her name right, the lady was not actually intended to be a huge part of the game. It's only because fans glommed onto her and became obsessed with her um, that she was such a big part of the marketing, I suspect. So it's possible that they didn't put as much time into her character design as maybe she did for other characters that had more screen time um, because of the simple reason that like you should spend the most time and resources on the characters who are in the game the longest. Um, it's also possible that 
that this artist who worked on this made thousands of versions of her outfits and honestly didn't expect for the one that was the most copied off of just one singular reference to be the one that they picked and then they did. Um, there are a lot of ways that this could happen without it really like besmirching the honor of this particular artist, especially when it comes to big companies like Capcom. You just have no idea how their scheduling works who's saying yes or no to things, who's like controlling what. So just to be clear, like this is not me trying to rake anyone over the coals or make anybody out to be some sort of like hack. I just honestly don't see discourse in the character design community very often and I had a really different uh, feeling about this than it seems like the majority. So I felt like it was worthwhile making a video just talking about it and kind of seeing where everyone else stands on this, particularly other people who spend a lot of their time designing characters, using references and drawing. I just think it's one of those things that like everyone has a different line for what's acceptable and what's not. And this is such an extreme example with such a popular design um, that I felt like it would be a shame not to address it on my channel. So with all of that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed watching me draw this and of course hearing me try to pronounce lady domitrescu's name over and over because every single review i saw pronounced it differently and so i tried to just go off of the katakana reading of her name um when it's written in japanese <laughs> uh i'll see you guys in the next one Thank you so much to my patrons, including Kelly Halsey, Kuroshi, Mumok, Alana the Artist, Rylan Parker, Rylan, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Lilia Lur, The Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey, Axolotl, Chris Draws, Kai Kieser, Tsubaki, The Becky, Liliana Hemantry, Mia Lavali, Angel File, Cutie Pie, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Lion, Alaria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Cola, Rachel Singh, Yoboya C, JJ Jade, and of course, Love Love Love.